Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for joining us this weekend. Okay. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. So what do you think about Florida? Tell me how you see it. You're out and about talking with voters and, and uh, constituents. What do you think the race looks like uh, now that we see Biden is still leading? Well, first, I, I, I could save people a lot of money on polling. Florida is going to be a one point state, half a point state in one direction or another. It's going to be close. That's the way that's where it's going to wind up. I, I actually feel pretty good for the president's chances here. Um, he's overperforming in areas like uh, southern Florida, where traditionally where he's going to lose, uh, like Miami-Dade County. You know, the, it's a big Democrat county or down where, where my home is. But um but he's going to lose by less than he did in 2016, and he's going to narrow margins and then help somebody. He's going to be just as strong, if not stronger, in other parts of the state. So I feel pretty good about the trend lines for the president and, uh, you know, in, in Florida. But it'll be a close race. New information this weekend, the Commerce Department blocking WeChat and, and uh, TikTok transactions. Of course, this could go away on TikTok should, TikTok should a deal happen with Oracle. But what are your thoughts on the proposal being pre presented so far? The Communist Party wants to own a majority stake in this TikTok uh, uh, agreement with Oracle. The U.S. wants to own it. What do we need to know about this situation? Because we already know that the Communist Party is trying to uh, get swaths of people's information and mine that data of American citizens. I think Oracle's worked really hard to put together the best deal possible. My concern remains this. If, if that code, you know, the, the code that gives the instructions to the system on what to do, if, if, the, if China continues to control the code, as I understand they would in this deal, they could put in that code an instruction to secretly send data back to China, to the mainland, no matter where the actual data is housed, there can be something embedded in that code that sends it the other way. Oracle says that no way, that they know enough about this that they can prevent it from happening. I think we have to be very careful in looking at that provision because if anything is, if there's any opportunity whatsoever for China to continue to collect personal data on Americans, then we can't be supportive of that deal. So, so that's the core and the crux yeah. of it that we're going to be looking at. All right. I want to ask you another uh, question about our intelligence, and, and that is uh, having to do with the what I call the coup that failed in my new book. That is what I call it, the coup that failed, and that is this effort to take down Donald Trump. We've spoken with your colleague, Senator Ron Johnson, many times on this program, and we know that Ron Johnson is trying to get uh, uh, documents from the Senate Intel Committee, but the Senate Intel Committee denied Johnson and Senator Grassley access to the documents that they need to see to continue to investigate the transition period from the Obama administration to the Trump administration. Why not just release those documents, Senator? Well, two things. The first is they're not asking for documents. They're asking to review the transcripts of interviews. And when that deal was put together, I wasn't chairman at the time, but Senator Burr and Senator Warner uh, told the witnesses that we won't turn over your testimony to our committee unless you agree to that. So that's the problem. That's the crux there. The second thing about the Intelligence Committee, everybody has to understand, is unlike these other committees where a chairman can do whatever they want, both the, the, the vice chairman and the chairman have to agree. The third is, they have if they want to interview these people, they most certainly have the right to issue subpoenas and interview whoever they want. Yeah, but at the same time, look, a lot of people, our viewers know exactly what happened here. I mean, Jim Comey is going to testify in front of Senator uh, Lindsey Graham's uh, committee, the Judiciary Committee, where he chairman that's happening on September 30th and now we know that there are you know there is more of a, a a likelihood that we'll see other subpoenas as well from Obama administration officials it doesn't appear that your colleagues on the left Mark Warner included really want to get to the bottom of this but we know that they used our intelligence agencies as weapons senator didn't they well Against i think the, the key actually was the FBI. Well, in fairness, I think the, the real weapon was the FBI, individuals in the FBI. And the report says that. Our Russia report makes it very clear that the FBI's and it was in the Russia report, the 2016 election report makes very clear that the FBI behaved very poorly with the things they did in 2016 in the aftermath of that election were terrible. We pointed out to those things, for example, the reliance on this dossier that actually the intelligence community, including the CIA, told the FBI not to use those documents, that they weren't reliable. Every single one of the intelligence agencies, separate from the FBI, said that the dossier was not the kind of document they should be relying on. We shouldn't even be talking about it because it could very well be something the Russians completely made up and put out there, um, uh, sort, sort, of, sort of the information, in order to create all sorts of havoc. The implications here are frightening. 
And that is you could go and hire some former spy from anywhere in the world to go up and make up stories and put it in this document and get someone in the U.S. government to put the official seal of approval on it as something that is serious and have it leaked on the eve of an election and influence the outcome of an election. I mean, that is the implications of what could have happened here. It all happened post-election. We've spent two years fighting off the ridiculous things that were in that dossier. And the intelligence community told them, this, we don't know what this thing is. Uh, some of the stuff doesn't even add up. Don't use it. And they insisted on using it anyway for their own internal purposes and, and went to a court and relied on it for a court. So that was clearly wrongdoing. And, we, and that's in the, ju- the, the jurisdiction of the Judiciary Committee. And that's why I'm glad Senator Graham is, is taking it on and we'll, we'll learn more here. Yeah, I mean, that's the point. They knew that it was garbage, and yet they used it to re-up a warrant to spy on an American citizen two more times. They knew in January of 2017, and yet just a couple of months later, and then a couple of months after that, they got two new uh, uh, re-ups for the renewals for that warrant to spy on Carter Page. We'll see what John Durham has right. to say about this. That's right. Hey, here's the bottom Senator, line. Some people you. in the FBI hey, wanted it to yes, be true. Yes, go ahead. No, some people in the FBI wanted that document to be true. That's the fundamental problem. And it wasn't. Fundamental problem. But is that is that criminal? Well, I think it is. It's certainly when you lie to a court, it is when when you knowingly lie to a court, it is. And we'll learn more. I, I have a feeling that there are things that they did that we don't even know about yet that are far worse than what's been publicly revealed. We'll find out. It's just a feeling. But but given some of the body language, I'm saying I have a feeling that there, some of the conduct is goes beyond anything any of us know yet. So should there be indictments then? Well, uh, that's what uh, the prosecutor's office is looking at now. And ultimately, I believe that already a couple of people have pled guilty to charges. And usually when you plead guilty to charges, it's because I'm speculating here, but it's because you're cooperating. So I anticipate that we will see some criminal charges here. Clearly, there was perjury and lying to a court. But the question goes deeper, and that is, was it knowingly was a part of a broader effort, a coordinated effort where a bunch of people in law enforcement sworn to uphold the law colluded to violate it? Look, we'll let the facts speak for themselves. We'll find out soon enough, I imagine. All right, Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much. We will be, of course, watching the developments.